All right, welcome back, viewers, to EGFA Season 1, Week 1 of League of Legends. We just had a quick hiccup, a little bit of technical difficulties, but we're right back here. This is Daniel Hand Tigers versus Nota Game Green Knights. We're going to get the same pick and ban up to the point that we were at when we had that issue. But, yeah, I mean, these are explosive draft picks that have come through here. We're just going to get right back to that last Alistar pick we saw. Um, up until that point, nothing should change. I'm excited for this matchup, though. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, and while they're kind of finishing up, resetting back to where they were, you know, we saw we saw some some good picks and bans. You know, what what excited you out of each of these sides? I definitely think that the Zaya Alistair was really really strong, coming out of the Daniel Hand Tigers. Yeah, the only thing that they were missing uh, is a jungler. And I was talking before the break there um, about how yes, it's an extremely aggressive bottom lane with the Alistar Zaya. Zaya should be able to combo uh, the Alistar. Crowd control very well. Should be able to get those feathers to come through uh, and follow up with the root. But the scary thing ends up being if they don't have some sort of jungler that can help set up those plays, then Brom's a pretty good answer into the Alistar. And Ezreal too. Ezreal can arc and shift away, create that space. And Brom can turn things around onto a lot of melee supports because of the concussive blows, that passive that can stun you back up if you get hit by those auto attacks. The Winter's Bite, right? The slow that can come from the Alistar. So the 2v2, while explosive, could go either way. It just depends on who gets the aggressive play and follow-up engagements. And I think that comes from the junglers. We we haven't seen a jungler yet for blue side, but red side has the Kha'Zix. If Alistar goes in and they're not set up to make sure that they burst someone out, Kha'Zix with a good counter gank or counter initiation off the Braum could go extremely well for red side. The green knights could be in control. It I think it all depends on what Daniel Hand Tigers bring here for blue side jungling. Yeah, and from the Notre Dame Green Knight side, you know, they they didn't hover a mid laner. You know, that was the only pick we didn't see as well coming from them. So, you know, what what do you think that the Green Knights here will pick into this Velkaz? You know, Velkaz isn't a champion that we see too often, either in competitive play or even in solo queue. Well, uh, it seems that Daniel Hand Tigers don't want to play against those assassin picks, those front end burst damage picks. Some of those have been banned out by the Green Knights as well. But I think when you uh, when you consider the Velkaz. He's pretty good at way of clear, not the best, but he's still good. Uh, he's one of those control mages, right? I think the best kind of pick you can take into that is someone who roams better and who can put more pressure onto that bottom lane, who can get more pressure on the side lanes from mid lane. The changes to those AP items in those recent patches mean you have a lot of strength to wave clear and leave, wave clear and leave. I think Oriana is a decent pick. You can also consider someone like Rise. Even Zareth, who does similar things to Velkaz, just wave clear is a little better. And if you take teleport or even ghost, you can roam a lot better and put more pressure on the side lanes. I think that's the main component here that the Green Knights are missing is pressure in the mid lane to either match the Velkaz, wave clear slightly better, keep him pushed under the turret so he can't leave that mid lane, or have somebody who is very quick to roam, an assassin of sorts, right? The Zed's been banned out. Maybe Talon. We don't ever really see that. He's not the strongest of champions, but I'm thinking something of that nature that can just roam so quickly and put pressure on the side lanes. Yeah, I definitely agree. You mentioned this Orianna earlier. You know, Deuce being their mid laner actually has Orianna in the champion in his champion pool, but he even has Galio. I really want to see this Galio come out. You said some another. Oh, they wanted to see a champion that that roam more, but it looks like she's just going to pick this Orianna. Yeah, I like the Oriana pick. Uh, I mentioned it's one that can do a little bit of everything, always going to scale really well. They even have somewhat of a ball delivery system with the Kha'Zix, who can be invisible, um, jump right into the entire enemy team. Um, and even the shields will be very useful for keeping Darius healthy in these fights, or if necessary, to keep anyone else healthy. There's not a lot of assassination potential here for the Daniel Hand Tigers on blue side, but... They have an excellent team fight. Whereas there's a lot more front end burst pick potential that could come through from Notre Dame Green Knights. They want to pick off single targets one at a time, take long, uh, like elongated engagements, right? Team fights that are not front end burst uh, for 5v5 uh, are a lot better for Green Knights. They want to hit Winter's Bite onto a single target, lock them down, kill that person, get the resets on the Kha'Zix, take one down at a time. Whereas Daniel Hand Tigers, they're totally comfortable to take a full on 5v5. Call of the Forge God, Velkaz Ultimate, they're just going to run straight at you. And Lee Sin will make sure that whatever tries to develop here for Green Knights 
can't be an answer to that kind of front end, full on smash five champions against five champions engagements that Daniel Hand Tigers are going to be looking for mid to late game. I, I definitely agree. Plus, with with the Tigers team composition, they have a lot more CC that they can really follow up with this Velkaz ultimate. You, you know, with this Alistar, with this Call of the Forge God from Orn, like you mentioned earlier. It seems that, like again, they they want to scrap as much as they can. You know, once they hit this mid game, they want to group as five and fight this formidable opponent in the in the Green Knights. Yeah, I think uh, in terms of mid game, even to late game, if the gold is close, things look pretty good here for Daniel Hand Tiger's composition. They can lock people down for Velkaz and Zaya to absolutely deal the damage necessary. But the worry is, if they're not equal in gold, if they don't have the vision control, if they can't get the fights on their terms, then they're going to get picked off so easily. Braum and Ezreal can pick people off together in their rotations together as that bot lane duo. Oriana, Shockwave, whoever she sees, who's out of position if she's got the items to do so. And who better to pick you off in the middle of the jungle, randomly in the river, than the bug, right? Because Zix, he's, Void Reaver is his name. This seems to be that comfortable pick. He's ready to 100-0 to zero Velkaz and Zaya if they're not perfectly in position with their team at all times. Yeah. And, you know, with this Darius pick, I really actually like this Darius pick because a lot of the time this top lane is really, really just scrappy. You know, a lot of the times lately it's just tank versus tank with, speci with stuff like bone plating coming into the game. You know, people are just trying to farm, make sure that their CS numbers are high and transition to that into the mid to late game with those top lane champions. But Darius is known as a champion for being very aggressive. You know, how do you see Darius mashing up into this Orn in the top lane? Things should be fine for Darius. It's just... Uh, dodge out Orn's combos, which are very slow, so they should he should be fine to dodge them out. Uh, Darius should have the pressure into Orn if he doesn't get hit by combos, simply because he'll have the bleed damage, he'll have more healing. Uh, the one thing that Orn has over Darius is the ability, I mean, he has this over everyone, the ability to purchase items while still in lane. So if he's healthy, the only thing he can't really bring to himself is consumables, but he can get more items. He can get armor if he wants it, health, whatever he needs to be able to remain consistent in this matchup i think things would be pretty quiet up there unless darius somehow begins to pop off which would be really bad news for the daniel hand tigers yeah and with darius if he pops off you know the, the green knights have a really easy way of snowballing this game you know kha'zix if he takes a lead he generally is really strong whereas you know you have lee sin if he falls off in the early game you know if kha'zix starts to dominate him in any sort of way lee sin really just starts to fall off in the mid to late game yeah he does uh it's it's not good news at all. It's really scary, actually, overall. So we are here loading onto Summoner Script. Once again, this is Daniel Hand Tigers. They're down 0-1 after their loss just moments ago. And then, of course, Green Knights. They're on red side. They're up 1-0. Let's take a look at these lineups on blue side. Once again, this is Daniel Hand Tigers. They got, in the top lane, Albino Karizu on that orn. And then jungling with the nice traditional lease in. That's going to be tax box game in the jungle mid lane the unseen blade on velkaz bottom lane yef three and joey sweden on Zaya and alistar yeah and on the red side here we have brock 880 playing mr dunk master darius void <laughs> reaver true to his name playing a kha'zix deuce 000 playing oriana combustible lemon bring arcane shifting into the game with that ezreal and cornstarch 08 playing brahm yeah, I mean, really good compositions. They're designed to do very different things, though, Hans. And and I, I hope to see teams play to their strengths, right? I, I'm one of those analyst-type players who I like to see different styles of compositions. I don't think that you have to play strictly into a specific meta. You know, you don't just have to copy what competitive play is doing. But whatever you do decide your strategy is going to be, play to your strengths. Avoid your weaknesses. If you just play the same way League of Legends with the just different champions, it doesn't always work out. In fact, oftentimes it works against your favor if you're not playing to strengths and avoiding weaknesses. And to that end, blue side here, they've got a 5v5 fight composition. They should be able to secure very strong 5v5 mid to late game engagements. Whereas on the other side, you've got these pick potential lanes very strong laners the oriana should do well into the velkaz should be able to push him into tower uh as long as she's not getting poked out same thing with darius avoid the skill shots from that orn should do just fine pushing him in he's got phase rush should be even more aggressive in that top lane 
these winning lanes should be just fine for the green knights to get them at least a slight if not you know healthy gold lead into the mid game to mitigate the difference in compositions whereas if the tigers actually get good engagements in the mid game hopefully by that point the green knights have secured for themselves enough of a gold advantage that they don't lose those fights 5v5 terribly hard yeah i would agree and like like you said earlier you know you're gonna you think that this oriana is gonna push in to this velkaz um i like the velkaz pickup of the barrier instead of heal and it looks like the green knights are just gonna invade as five into the blue side jungle here Yep, it's gonna be Klepto Ezreal. He does get a stack of gold. We'll see what he actually consumes that for. It will be 80 gold. Not quite the high end of it. Not terrible either. Better than selling it. Yeah, and heck, he could even back, back right now and buy an extra potion for lane just for getting that extra gold early. Yeah, or control word. But it looks like they will just do standard jungle leashes for both these teams. No real explosive level one, just getting in there for a couple of Klepto Mancy procs for this Ezreal. Combustible Lemon on the Ezreal, looking to get that, as I mentioned, the early gold lead for his team. Yeah. And, you know, as most early games, just going out to, to farm and pull, pull these buffs for the junglers. Uh, who do you see coming out on top between this this Lee Sin versus this Cossack matchup? You know, I th I feel like Lee Sin definitely needs to make a bit more of an influence in the early game. Well, the the Lee Sin is really strong for early game, right? He just has to play to that strength of Lee Sin. Be they they have very similar clear times, the Lee Sin and the Kha'Zix. This is quite the trade in mid lane, though. Actually, Unseen Blade down to only 100 health. That was ill-advised to say the least i would say in the mid lane but to answer your question uh they have very similar clear times it looks like they're both gonna go first buff into wolves into probably second buff since the raptors are so damaging early but what leeson has to do is stay slightly ahead uh in terms of strategy the way he's thinking where he wants to be slightly ahead of the kha'zix he has to have the element of surprise because if kha'zix is able to catch leeson in the jungle if Lee Sin lands his Q, it's a different story, but other than that, the, the Kha'Zix, the isolation damage can be so scary to deal with, and so you have to see this Lee Sin being a couple steps ahead. If not, Kha'Zix should be just fine. And speaking of being a couple steps ahead, topside is where we see Kha'Zix showing up first. The junglers don't see each other in the river, but this is pretty good position for the Kha'Zix. Yeah, and it looks like Lee Sin's actually going to opt to gank mid lane instead of this top lane since Deuce has pushed out so much. But, you know, Kha'Zix... Yeah, Volkaz being very low and not being able to follow it up. Oriana being actually able to take out that Velkaz right in front of the Lee Sin, while Kha'Zix takes out that top laner as well. So two good kills going out for the Notre Dame Green Knights to start. Yeah, and the final engagement from the Lee Sin in mid lane does at least get the heal out of Oriana. She used her own flash to secure that. The flash came through from the Orn as well, but he did fall to the Kha'Zix. It was nice patience there from Kha'Zix to wait out the flash. Just walking in there, waiting for that spell to come through, then following up with the sleep. So, oh man, I mean, 0 to 2, that's going to be a 1500 gold lead here in favor of the Green Knights early. And we mentioned they're the favorite to win this game. They're, they're, we've seen them take second place coming into, or finishing out the first trial season we had last year, Hans, and they're looking just fine. Remember, they're 1-0 already in, to in terms of overall match score here in Season 1, so they're looking to make it a quick 2-0, and I, I gotta say, things are looking pretty good for them. Although, in this top lane, I like to see Orn being aggressive after falling, but he's actually gonna fall. Wow, that is so much damage. The Darius phase rush keeps him in range to keep dealing that damage, and that's a quick two kills in the top lane. That's bad news. Darius can get out of hand. Yeah, and and earlier I want to I make up oh, there fighting again in this bottom lane. Leeson being very aggressive, very aggressive forces his own flash out, and that's gonna be a nice combo underneath the turret. The heal comes through flash too. Ezreal is there, nice concussive blows keeps him under the turret. And Alistar's not tanky yet, just a little bit of health, and he actually ends up falling. Nice play there to turn things back around in the bottom line. That's gonna be 4-0 now. Ooh, Winter's Bite does land. Leeson down to 100 health. He's probably just gonna have to recall here. It's not safe, really, for him to stick around any longer. Kind of just wasting time, because there's nothing he can get down here in the bottom lane. Yeah, and I want to actually go back to earlier between the fight between Oriana and Velkaz, you know. Oriana had to flash to be able to secure this this kill on Velkaz, but Velkaz didn't even pop his barrier, you know. Yeah. And going into lane, now he's down 
nine, uh, 17 CS doesn't look very good for Velkaz. You know, how does Velkaz uh, come back in this lane? I mean, the good news is scaling. Velkaz has true damage. So as long as he gets some AP, he's going to deal damage to the squishy targets at the very least. But short of that, you said it, he's down three waves. And even when he tries to get a trade like this, level five to level five, but Orianna's going to get six first. And, oh my goodness, no heal on the Orianna. She's actually getting low. There's the true damage procs that can come through. At least you have that going in favor of the Velkaz. But you mentioned he's down now four waves, just about four waves in that mid lane. Like, that's really, yeah. really bad. He needs I items one way or the other. Yeah, and even in that exchange, you know, Velkaz used all of his skills on Orianna, didn't even use it to farm his, his wave. And now he's, he's far behind in CS. Yeah, very far behind. You can see the Braum strength in this bottom lane. Uh, those concussive blows do so much work. He did get that kill under turret, and he's just been punishing the Alistar. The Alistar can't go in at all. Speaking of going in, in the top lane, this is going to be a 1v2 for the Darius. He's level 6. The true damage comes through. That's the dunk, Master Darius. Will he get 2? That's a double kill in a 1v2 in the top lane. Oh my goodness. I said Darius can get out of hand, and that seems to be exactly the case. Oh, wow. 3, 0, 1, and up 20 CS, too. There's even more fighting in the bottom lane. Concussive blows. The last rock comes through onto the Alistar. Nice and breakable blocks some of that skill shot damage from the Zaya. They're going to have to back off. Red side here. The Green Knights are actually really unhealthy in the bottom lane. Teleport comes through in mid. This is going to be the Darius. Remember, he has so much damage. Nice pull into the Q. It's not going to be kill credit for the Darius, but he's got five kill participation out of seven perfect five out of seven if you may and that's going to be a flash forward from the alistar 200 health onto the carry and that's going to be concussive blows trying to the flash comes through from the brum one more auto attack will do the flash forward from the zaya but she's going to be just fine getting out of that turret range that's a nice turnaround in the bottom lane good news here for the tigers where it seems everywhere else in the map things have been disastrous yeah very very scrappy games coming out today just like you said, this Darius can really get out of hand, you know, using his teleport just to get into that bot lane. And heck, he didn't even use potions in, in most of those earlier exchanges, just choosing to pop them now here in lane. This Darius, I feel, like you said earlier, is going to get very out of hand. Yeah, I like the aggressive phase rush choice too. He's going to have so much movement speed. He goes straight for the phage as the first item as well. Extra movement speed when he does auto attack, even when he kills these minions, even more so. It seems that Leeson doesn't have to spend and can't afford to spend any time topside anymore. When he showed up last time, he died. 1v2, 2v1, if you will, against this Darius. He kills them both with his ultimate because he had level 6 right before they showed up. So Leeson has to look for pressure elsewhere. You don't even need the Kha'Zix topside anymore, meaning bot lane, where you hope to see an advantage here if you're a fan of the Tigers when they got that kill just recently. Kha'Zix could just spend all his time down there because he doesn't have to be top lane anymore. But this is a fight in mid lane. This, speaking of the Kha'Zix, he's there. They're only 400 health, down to 200 health. One auto attack will do it. Deuce has to use his heal not to die to minions, but it will be kill credit going over to Kha'Zix. That's now two kills for the Soriano with an assist to boot. And three times the overall creep score in mid lane. Oriana scaling just well. Yeah. And Kha'Zix going right around for a gank back onto this Lee Sin and going to be able to pick up those double buffs straight off of Lee Sin, putting a solid advantage for the Green Knights here. And yeah. you can see the superstar shining out here with this Darius, with this Orianna, like you said, with the CS numbers being very, very high. I want to see this Lee Sin doing more, you know? Most of his ganks that he's been... Oh, never mind. There's a, an exchange in the top lane, and Orin able to shut down this Darius. Yeah, uh, that's really good news for the Tigers. That's a lot of gold that gets traded over. Um... And to be fair, that's the exact way back in this for the Tigers, is when a team like the Green Knights, like any team that gets a lead of this nature, they might get ahead of themselves in the sense that they'll start making way too aggressive of plays that backfire like that. The Darius actually went under turret. He had his flash, but he took two tower hits and then flashed out when he wasn't even close to getting Alberto, uh, Albano here low enough to actually die to an Oxygen Guillotine. So... Taking two tower hits, gets really low. Call of Forge Gods comes through. Nice play. Turns it back around. Gets nice shutdown gold. Leeson trying to sneak down into the bottom lane. Maybe the aggressive plays that'll come through from Braum here might be enough to turn things back around. Yeah, I... Oh, and it looks like Alistar is just going to go right in for the engage. And this will be. The nice Featherstorm comes through. Root onto two. There's no teleport available for the Darius to come and sh turn things around. But you can see, that was a great use of the Alistar combo into his own ultimate to stay healthy. 
Oh, the concussed blows was used as a bait. That's 100 health here for the Ezreal. And one more auto attack might do it. No, the heal comes through. Lee Sin kind of playing awkwardly. One auto attack will do it. That's just plenty of damage. Oh my goodness. That was so close for Dragon's Rage actually doing enough damage, but not quite enough. We'll actually end up gifting a kill over to the Ezreal. He's now 1-1-1, one, one, and one, but Oriana makes it on the backside. Nice combo from the Alistar makes him get out of range. And that will be a root coming through into the knockup and the ultimate. That's nice turn around. A quasi shutdown, if you will. Magic damage shield from the rune comes through. We can see Unseen Blade here looking for blood. There's no mana here. Very low health for the bottom lane of Green Knights. But speaking of low health, not much mana. The same is true for Zaya. She's going to have to back off. You don't want to continue to get things out of hand when you just got a couple of good things come your way. The Tigers have to back off. Reset now. Try and use the gold that they just got for themselves to turn things around next time. But speaking of turning things around, plenty of time in mid lane for the Kha'Zix to get first brick. That's 650 gold that just goes straight into his pocket. He's already 3-0. and And he's an assassin. He's going to be picking people off left and right. Yeah, I de and with this Kha'Zix so far ahead, I want to point at this Lee Sin, you know. Lee Sin down three deaths, you know, very far behind in, in CS numbers. His ganks haven't really been the best, you know. We, we saw his first gank coming into that mid lane where Orion was even able to kill the Ka uh, kill the Velkaz. You know, then Lee Sin followed up into the top lane and actually died. So, and, and being way too over aggressive in bot lane just earlier, I want to see this Lee Sin do more, you know. He has to play a little bit safer and it looks like he's going straight for a gank in the top lane now. Yeah, not able to actually get behind him to look for that, but remember, Darius, last time this happened, he was able to get the dunk, and that's the first one that comes through. He does get slowed by it. the actual call of the Forge God, but double kill 1v2, there wasn't even an assist for the Kha'Zix. That's what, I mean, deja vu, right, Hunt? That was the exact same thing you just mentioned had happened previously. Lee Sin trying to get a gank off, but actually dies in a 1v2 once again. Darius so strong. Kha'Zix was there to follow things up if necessary, but he didn't even get an auto attack off. It was totally smooth sailing for the Darius, and he gets another turret. That's so much gold now in the hands of the Green Knights. Teleport is coming through in mid. That's the combo that comes through from Alistar while his ultimate is ticking. It's going to wear off very shortly here. Bottom lane does show up. Zaya can't chase out of vision, especially knowing that Kha'Zix and Darius are in that river. Yeah, and since Kha'Zix and Darius are there, they're just going to be able to secure Harold. And now, like you said earlier, this Darius has a lot of gold, you know, with that black cleaver early, you know, Orin isn't even hasn't even finished a full item yet. And, and it looks like Darius is probably just gonna use his item advantage at, after he backs and just continue taking this game. Yeah, why the heck not, right? You can actually send him bottom lane and send your duo lane to mid lane or get even more pressure on dragons and whatnot. Where this Darius, wherever he's sent, it seems multiple answers, multiple members will have to be sent to answer here for the Tigers. Because even when they send Lee Sin and Orn together, they just both die to the Darius. I think you need to spe send someone with more crowd control. Maybe send the two man, right? The Zaya and the Alistar might be the ones who have to match this Darius. Otherwise, he might just take the tier two in the face of the Orn. Even if Lee Sin shows up again, he might just continue to gift kills over to this Darius. Now, five, one, two. He's got a cloth armor on top of all the health stacking from Black Cleaver. He's really strong right now. Lee Sin's at the bottom lane, though. This could actually be good news for the Tigers. There's going to be the stun that comes through on the Ezreal. He actually awkwardly fires. His ultimate, man, that's actually really good here for the Tigers. Oh my goodness, but teleport's coming through here. There's not one for Orn. This is going to be Darius in the bottom lane as there's a fight in the river too. Dragon even gets aggroed. True damage, will it be enough? No, the heal comes through from Moriana. She's going to stay safe. Darius forced the return in the bottom lane, but now he's stuck in a 1v3. He's 1v2 before. Will he make the difference? Kha'Zix is invisible. Nice movement speed. He jumps in. And Gus of Blows has two procs. Now three from Winter's Bite, but that's out of mana for Braum. Nobody able to follow up. Lucky here for the Tigers that Darius didn't turn things around in an insane way with his teleport there. They were able to get the catch onto the Ezreal, but that's about all they get out of it. Yeah, very, very scrappy fights coming from the, these teams. I know Darius is now even so far ahead where the jungler just donated him the Rift Herald. They're going to keep fighting again. Yeah, I called to the Forge God, completely misses everyone. Darius, very, very low, but also has his ultimate available. Dies mid animation, and that's a one for one overall. Concussive Blows keeps the Orn stunned up. The pillar's gonna time out too. Look at the Flame Breath, trying to turn things around, but this could be the resets for the Kha'Zix. He's actually quite low, gets knocked into max turret range, and he's gonna trade his life, getting a double kill for himself. 
but he took down the entirety of bottom lane. Ultimate still on cooldown here from Velkos as he's trying to put out the chase. Can't even get the true damage proc of his passive, but double boss Orin still wants to fight. Brahms, really low mana, doesn't quite get the knock up. Will try and slow him out, but you can see Ezreal's still healthy, still safe. Able to remain just fine in the bottom lane. And now, Velkaz just trying to aggress. Oh my goodness, the snipe comes through! That's gonna be a true shot barrage. Landing quite true. Combustible Lemon, nice hit with his ultimate there. Able yeah, to take out the mid laner. 0-5 Velkaz, he's having a rough game. Yeah, and initially it was just a 3-for-3 three three exchange, but Ezreal being able to snipe that Velkaz there makes it a 4 and it looks like Orange is going to stay in this bottom lane with with this double buffs. You know, Ezreal being able to con consistently poke him there. How do you how do you see this this game turning around? You said you wanted to see see these lanes swap around, and and they chose to put the Zaya and Alistar into the mid lane. With all this armor, I think Orin can try to do okay in the one v two. He can try to keep himself just fine. Oh. Gifting a kill over once again, that's too bad. As long as he doesn't get stunned up. Oh, speaking of stunned up in the bottom end, this is going to be Orin trying to turn things around. Alistar and Zaya are here. Both have their ultimates just a few seconds. Nice combo is going to keep Rom really, really stuck in place. Oh, there's going to be the stopwatch. And the heal had just come through from Ezreal. He tries to use the stand behind me, but it doesn't actually get him out of dodge. Nice pick off there in the bottom lane. That's kind of what you have to see. Yes, it's 8 to 18 overall, but at least bottom lane here for the Tigress is doing just fine. This might be another dunk come through. The massive burst damage. Guillotine doesn't even get to get halfway through its animation. Since the Kha'Zix damage is just enough. They're pushing on to that tier 2. Do take down the tier 2. It's at least answered with the first turret in favor of Tigers on the bottom end of the map. It has to be this Zaya, this Alistar combo. Zaya's going to have to be the one to carry the game here if it's going to go in favors of Tigers. Yeah, and a great usage of that Rift Herald in the top lane to understanding that yes, there is a team fight going on in the bot lane. We're losing that fight, but we're gonna we're gonna use this Rift Herald on Darius and secure this top lane tower in exchange. Yeah, I mean you always want to see that uh in this macro play. You want to say if you're losing something or even like trying to do something on the other end of the map, you have to mirror that on the other end. So if you're trying to make a play on one end, you have to play safe on the other because you're committing so many resources on one end of the map. You can't commit more on the other. If you're trying, if you're getting aggressed on on one end of the map, you either need to answer that or swap it and get the pressure on the opposite end. So if you're taking a fight in bottom, you have to have top lane back off. Don't die like what just happened. Whereas, if you're having them fight top lane, then you can't really go aggressive bottom lane. You have to be careful. You have to play to your strengths, avoid those weaknesses, as I said early on. But, it seems there's only weaknesses when you're this far behind in gold. You saw just the burst. 100 to 0 combo from that Orianna near that dragon. That's going to be the first elemental that actually falls. It's 18 minutes in, so this is seeming to be a longer game than what we're used to seeing, at least from our last ones on stream. First elemental too, it's just gonna be a cloud, so it's not gonna help too much, but Alistar's ready to go in, starts his ultimate, that's gonna be a true shot barrage that comes through. Will the concussive blows do enough to keep him locked into place? Zai down to half health, but Orianna's looking pretty low. Ezreal's kinda healthy, but running out of mana, and that's gonna be the burst that comes through this assassin, but down to 200 health is the Cusix. Can't actually remain any longer. Winter's Bite gets the last block of concussive blows, and the ultimate didn't last any longer from the Alistar. Nice choice of the Dragon's Rage to push one person back. Forces two flashes with Call of the Forge God. This is gonna be Braum falling down. Oh my goodness, the Shockwave. Oh man, that's a lot. Man, attack, dissonance, shop, wave. Almost 100 to zeros, mid laner. He had taken already a little bit of damage, but he's going to fall to that combo. Yeah, and it looks like this team, these teams really like fighting in this bot lane as Orin looks to be very aggressive, you know, being out in the red side jungle by himself. Um, but definitely very well played by the Orianna and the Ezreal. Uh, both of them sidestepped a lot of the skill shots very well even if earlier you could see that the Ezreal kind of stopped right before the call of the forge god hit him but now Darius and the top lane creating an insane amount of pressure for this team yeah we're approaching that 20 minute mark Ooh, but looks like Lee Sin with thread buff trying to get something here it does land sonic wave into resonating strike 200 health the shield had come through but Darius is right there Darius is right there to follow up and support his mid laner. The solo laners got each other's backs, and now he has so much movement speed. The phase rush keystone on top of the 
the rage passive from the black cleaver that's bonus movement speed up to 60 if he kills a minion or a champion kills some sort of enemy and he's got the dead man's plate to catch you in the first place such a scary frontline champion here speaking of frontline he is right there trying to get onto the back line and that has to be the ultimate coming through from the alistar they're in a corner which is pretty good for zaya if she can actually put out the damage but can they actually take this fight called the forge god is not available that's the first noxian guillotine flashes forward to get a pull on to three the Unseen Blade is getting really, really low. Down to half health. That's going to be Noxian Gitin. Round number two. Don't master Darius gets another one. Double kill for himself. They're going to back off. And now that Orianna's here too, they can look for it maybe even more. Do they back off? Do they keep the pressure coming in? Nice ultimate. Feather Swarm keeps her healthy. But down to 200 health. That's not enough. 100 health is way too low. One more command attack does enough. Orianna able to stay safe on the wings. Concussive blows means that he's going to get locked down underneath the turret. And that's almost... Oh my goodness, that's almost the ace for nothing as they almost traded a death. Five for zero overall. They're breaking the base open as, just as the mid laner respawns. It's a long fight, just long enough for Velkaz to show back off the platform with the Alistar. Will they be able to defend this second inhibitor? Yeah, I, I want to see the Daniel Hand Tigers establish some more vision. You know, they, they got caught out in the jungle two times basically during that entire team fight, and that's kind of why the fight fell apart. They they pushed into the into the jungle and they, every single time they got punished for it because they just didn't have the vision. They didn't know where the green knights were, right outside of their base. Yeah, it's right outside their base, which is about where they're able to leave right now. Uh, now that they've lost two inhibitors, most super minions are going to be pushing into the base. Baron's going to be on the map, but there's only so much available. Oh, this could be a fight though. Kazix trying to play that invisibility game. But they're the only two here. Their whole team had recalled. Oh, this could actually be pretty good for the Tigers if they're actually able to burst out a Baron or get a catch here in the river. This is that one window where they might actually be able to take a fight. But they're going to recall back off, seed some of that vision, as you mentioned. But they're standing on a ward. This could actually be really bad. Command attack, Shockwave is available, did not use it. Actually does now catch that Lee Sin. Now with the jungler dead, you can imagine they just go straight for that Baron. Yeah, definitely straight for that Baron call. And you know, like you said earlier, they, they needed to, as soon as they arrived at Baron, take the Baron. You know, they waited too long for the rest of the team to come back from their engagements. You know, they were 5v2, and they just waited long enough to make it a 5v4. And with that gold lead, it doesn't matter if they're down a player. They were just able to, to secure, that le uh, secure that kill onto Lee Sin and now take this Baron. Recalls, those empowered recalls will come through. That means they'll match that wave in the bottom. Don't actually want to lose a turret. It was good, at least for the Tigers that they had set up that wave to push. Some of that golden experience will crash onto that turret, maybe even get it low enough to die. That would be some nice global gold that would go back over the Tigers, but it has been the Baron now taken. We're here at the 22 and a half minute mark. That means with this empowered wave of minions and supers pushing in the other two, they should be fine to push through bottom lane to try and end the game. These items, the inventories here for the carries specifically on the side of Green Knights. Ezreal, two items working on a third. Same is true for Oriana, two items working on a third. Even their jungler, this assassin, has two items working on, uh, if you're not counting the jungle one, working on a fourth if you do. So strong. They're hoping here, you can see even the, the last hope, if you will, for the Tigers is to get to late game where Orin's items, the bonus items, could make the difference. But you can see the tankiest member of their composition is supposed to be this Alistar, but he's died now five times. He just instantly dies in each of these catches. You mentioned the vision, getting caught out in the jungle. Just happened on your screen once again. This is going to be a tier two in the bottom lane falling. Why even go for the elemental if you can just push into the base? A little bit of an awkward catch there onto the Velkaz. They're just going to keep pushing the base. Yeah, and it looks like they're just going to be use this recently buffed Baron and just continue to push in. And looks like we're going to go straight into a pause because we have a player who just disconnected. Um, but yeah, with this Baron powered buff, you know, it it looks like there isn't really a way to stop these Green Knights, you know. And honestly, I would like to make a point here that I'm very, very glad that Banner of Command just got nerfed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can imagine how even more oppressive this would be when you're up this much gold, right? 19,000 gold. Uh, it's already so hard to take these fights against a Baron up team. You can imagine how much worse that would be if, like, they had Bar like, a Baron up Banner of Command cannon minion, right? The Baron cannon boy. 
so many different names that have come through on Twitter on those recent patches. But this could be at least Oriana getting caught, maybe. Will the Shockwave come through? No, it was on cooldown, and she had already used heal. It was a little bit of a fight. At least they haven't lost anyone yet. Valkos has now respawned. Both the inhibitor turrets have fallen. You can see all the super minions are attacking the Nexus. Nexus down to half health. The ultimate comes through. Valkos trying to defend, but the minions will do just enough. The last auto attack comes through from Braum. Plus 50 gold. Three knights take the win over the Tigers. 24 and a half minutes in. Congratulations to them. Yeah. And and you see very good control of the game from the Notre Dame Green Knights, you know. Obviously, we, we expected them to be the favorites in this match, but it looks like, you know, they were able to notice their strengths with this Darius, with this Orianna, and knew, like, hey, you know, we secured these leads in the early game. And just like the last game, you know, an early triple kill leads to a really good itemization and being able to take advantage of those items as they progress into the late, mid to late game. Yeah, I mean, that was just the story there. You mentioned it, Hans, where uh, if you get those early leads, you play to that strength, you play to that side of the map where you got those gold leads. And from there, you just continue it. You, you press that advantage into more and more gold lead first brick more towers, more uh, objectives, catch them out in rotation when you have that kind of stuff. So, I mean, really well played here from the Green Knights. A little sloppy, they did get caught from time to time, but overall, they press their advantages in the right places and bring out the win. Yeah, and and you mentioned these these little slip-ups, you know? That means even even performing such, such a really well-performed victory, they still have room to improve, you know? They can still look at these these plays that they, where they did slip up and... I can't wait to see them grow. Yeah, uh, same. I mean, this is just the week one, right, of our season one here for EGFH. You can catch action every week starting at 3 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday with Rocket League. Three, uh, the same is true on Wednesday for League of Legends and Thursday for Overwatch. So be sure to follow official EGF on Twitter and Twitch to catch up on all this action. Thanks for joining us. My name is Jake at Superman Casting. Maury, you can follow me on social media, Twitch, Twitter, and the like by that handle at Superman Casting and on supermancasting.com. Yeah, and I'm David Hans Chen. You can follow me at Hans on Twitter or even on Facebook. Thank you again for joining us today and we'll see you guys tomorrow.